Alrighty, hello and welcome to my introduction to WeBots and ArduPilot. I hope to kind of go over the basics of WeBots so you can use it, as well as show you how to start running ArduPilot and looking into the back end of the what connects WeBots and ArduPilot, such that you can add your own vehicle or use cameras. So let's get started. The uh, first thing you do after have, um, installing WeBots and having a working dev environment is to, within WeBots, navigate to the WeBots uh, world file, uh, sorry, folder, within ArduPilot. Down here, I would suggest starting by running the Iris world. There's a basic uh, quad rotor. If you're interested in rovers, we have one for the Pioneer 380 as well. And the other ones I will get into later. All right, starting up our world, first thing that I want to point out is up here, we have a simulation time and speed. To actually start the simulation going, I'm going to hit play. You can see we're running near real time. If you want it to go faster than real time, double arrow, you've jumped up faster. But for now, we'll st um, start in just normal real time. Down here, I also want to note that we it says now we're waiting for the ArduPilot settle. So to actually provide the settle, we're going to run this following command. Hopefully now we will see uh, ground control, recognize the settle is running, and see our vehicle on the runway. Once we get GPS connection, let's see, we can take off our vehicle. Well, sometimes we can take off our vehicle. There we go. And we see it reflected in WeBots. Congratulations, we now have a flying drone. A little bit more um, to, uh, about the basics of WeBots. Your right click is your pan. The left click is your rotate. Now we can see that we're in a world. A giant sign, runway, ground, and this nice background. I will now also demonstrate the ability to go faster in real time. I always hate waiting for how long it takes a, a simulated drone to return to launch. However, in Fast in real time, it is a breeze. Alrighty. Now that we've got a drone flying uh, in WeBots, let's kind of dive back um, um, into the um, the back end. So, and this, jump into VS Code and navigate to the WeBots Python um, folder. In here, you will see a controller folder. This is where the Python code um, is that actually is being run by WeBots and is communicating with the Zittle. Parameters folder, uh, which is not super important, but contains files um, such as the default parameters, such as PID2, and, um, as well as some other bits and pieces for Iris. If you make a different vehicle, you'll probably need to make your own. And then the first folder um, of major interest, especially if you're making your own drone um, or other vehicles, such as a rover or uh, possibly a plane, you would create your own uh, product Protofile. Here's an example of the profile for the Iris drone. It starts with um, declaring some parameters. So we want to be able to edit them when we put the drone into the world. We want to edit the translation and rotation, maybe its name, what controller it has, and the arguments. Looking through um, uh, through this protofile, the body then has um, some key things, such as shape of the actual body. You see, is stored in the meshes folder. Uh, this mesh has a dark gray appearance. If, for um, uh, by the way, you have um, any interest in what PBR experience appearance is, what the shapes are, what group means, feel free to uh, Google WeBots and then PBR appearance. For example, WeBots documentation is absolutely amazing. Kudos to uh, the dev team over there. Going down further, we will see that we have four propellers, an accelerometer, GPS, gyro, and inertial unit, or IMU. These four sensors are crucial for every single uh, ArduPilot simulated vehicle, as ArduPilot needs um, these information such as acceleration and uh, location. And then the propellers uh, are a little bit complex. I won't dive too, um, too much into them besides saying that they have a name. 
and that if you copy this over and put it onto your own drone, the things that you need to modify are probably thrust and torque coefficients, where they're located, aka the center of thrust, as well as putting your own uh, possible uh, mesh, make it look as you want it to. All right. Let's actually see where, um, where these profiles are used by going back into this world file that we just opened. Uh, this world file, we'll see, um, imports a lot of different protos, in particular our iris, and puts them into the world. So let's scroll down to the most important one, of course, the iris drone, and look at it. See that the first thing we, um, we've done is we've given it a location. Then we've said, hey, use the autopilot vehicle controller that we, um, we've designed, and we'll talk to the SIDL, and pass those arguments to that controller. The, um, the motors. Uh, if you're designing a simple quad rotor or um, a simple hex um, hex rotor or something, uh, your implementation would look very similar to this. You would just pass the, um, the motors. However, there is a lot of different um, controller arguments you can pass. For example, if we go into vehicle controller, you can um, see them all. The ones that I want to point out are renaming any of the sensors. By default, they will have uh, the accelerometer, if not given a name in the protofile, will be called accelerometer. But if you, for some reason, have a different named accelerometer, this is where we'd modify that. Also, if you want to add a camera to, um, to the, the system, you would um, pass that in. And you could even stream that, um, that camera out. Now, actually, let's, let's dig, um, dive into that a little bit. So, opening our worlds in WeBots again. We can um, open up the iris camera example, and we should see a new black box. This is because this time our drone, iris drone, has in its extension slot camera and camera. To actually get this camera displaying anything instead of a black box, actually to run the simulation, we'll see, boom, We've got a simulated camera. That's only useful if we can actually get images somehow into code, so we can actually utilize that information. There's two ways to do this. Go over both real quick. The first one being, actually, in this Pilot vehicle controller, we scroll down to the bottom, we'll see that what's actually um, run is getting all those arguments and throwing them into this WeBots RD vehicle object, which is from this WeBots vehicle.py file. With this um, uh, vehicle object, we can actually do things such as uh, getting a camera image, and that will give us a OpenCV compatible NumPy array representing an image, and uh, user code could loop through that and do things like just computer vision uh, or connect it to your application. The other way of doing this, however, is if we go back to WeBots, we'll see that we are also passing the argument, uh, not only the camera name, but a camera port. And what this allows is for streaming of the images over the network. So, we can look at an example um, of receiving a piece of code scripts uh, called example cameras receive. And what this will do is basically subscribe to that some uh, that connection from WeBots and give us them uh, give us an image uh, now this is being completely run um, run independently and uh, theoretically your code base could utilize this uh, using a switch rather than um, taking a real camera stream uh, so let's look let's look at this a little bit closer um, it's quite simple we start by connecting and defining a packet header. So at, um, at the beginning of each uh, image, we, uh, we are sending the size of the image. So we get the size of an image, width and the height. Then we receive the image, convert it from bytes to a nice OpenCV image, and then show it. You do anything, um, anything you want in between there. For example, there's a little bit of an example I wrote here for uh, detecting Aruka markers. If we run that instead, you will see that we now have Aruka detection. The last thing that now I want to go over 
is how one might use a depth camera. Because Webots natively supports depth cameras. In particular, it calls them rangefinders. Quite peculiar to me. But they're act they actually act the same way as cameras, except for they pr um, produce depth data. So you see, just like the camera we had before, we have this image. And actually, this camera will, um, this image is, can be streamed the exact same way by passing in the controller args a rangefinder and rangefinder port. And you can once again receive that information. That is, however, the last of uh, the things that I want to show that uh, we bought an autopilot could do. Uh, so if you have any other questions, uh, I would start by reaching out to the um, WeBots wiki, uh, which has way, way um, too much documentation. Um, and I applaud the developers um, over at WeBots for that. Um, but then if you um, need help uh, beyond that, asking on the Discord and um, seeing what other people do have done, as well as uh, looking through the code. Thank you for watching.